my friend would give me like some homegrown food that he made with rock dust and different soil nutrients and I would taste the food and it's like, wow, this food tastes better. You know, it's more alive, it's more vibrant. I need to start doing this myself because like, honestly, this is like the next level for me to like improve what I'm doing in my life. So that really got me started to, and motivated me to like, okay, John, you gotta grow your own food now because that's the next level, your next evolution of your diet to take your diet to the next level. And then I found that actually I really enjoyed it a lot because it really gets you, gets your hands in the dirt, connected with nature, and then allows you to have access to food that you know you wouldn't otherwise be able to find. Hey, I'm John Kohler and I'm here in my backyard today and I'll share with you guys what I'm growing in my backyard. I just live in a standard American tract house and I basically maxed out my backyard with fruits and vegetables and I'm going to show you guys how, it, how you guys could do it too in your backyard. So uh, let's go ahead on a tour with me. It's over here I have like a, it's a 40 foot long bed so it runs the length of my backyard and it's maybe about, I don't know, 18 inches wide. And this is the end of the summer season. So I still have my summer crops. This is like all the basil I grow. I grow a lot of standard Italian basil plus some purple basil. And I always try to use a vertical space in my yard because I don't have a lot of width, you know, or land space, but I could always grow vertically and grow things taller so I could actually have more food. So here we have some uh, water spinach, which is a good summer grown green here in the desert. In addition, you can see I've made this arch um, from a, like a stock panel for cattle and I'm growing the Malbar spinach up it. So it's like a nice vining plant. My goal was to have it entirely covered, but it didn't entirely work out that way, but I still have lots of food. And more importantly than the food, I really love these little berries that it grows if they're falling off that I could uh, use to replant for next year or to actually juice them to get the purple anthocyanins. Actually, they're, they're beta cyanins actually in there, not the anthocyanins. And then uh, moving back, I basically built um, raised beds out of the concrete blocks. It will start at the back one first. All right, so this is how I grow the food, just like in raised beds. These happen to be made out of concrete blocks. And I just lined up the blocks and filled it with some good soil and I just plant the vegetable starts and I have lots of food growing. So this has lots of like uh, dinosaur kale and collard greens. I got some peppers in here as well. In a pot here, I have a um, kumquat tree. And then this is actually a really cool plant. This is actually called the salad tree. In uh, Hawaii, they call it bele. And I think it's a ahubiscus manuhat is the Latin name. And so these leaves, you could just basically pick off and eat like lettuce. They're really nice and mild. And that grows in the summer, whereas in the summer here in the desert, I can't grow lettuce because it's just way too hot. Um, in this back wall, I have a trellis and I try to grow things vertically. And these are some tropical plants that will grow year round. So my goal is to grow perennial vegetables. So perennial vegetables, you basically plant once and they'll grow year round and provide you guys with food. If I was in Hawaii or Florida, these guys would live year round. As also the Moringa tree, which is right here, uh, Moringa is a really uh, powerful superfood. It actually has anti-cancer properties and it grows really big, but it only grows in the summertime here because we get too cold in the winter when it freezes. Um, but if you had it in like Florida or Hawaii, it'd grow year round. And then also this is the chaya or tree spinach that should be cooked before eaten. This guy here is a really fun one. It's called a green pepper basil. So you can see like the basil like flowers, but it, these leaves taste like green peppers, actually. So yeah, I, I really try to grow a lot of exotic and unique varieties, some things that you just can't find in the store. Like some of these I forget the names of because it's not a common American vegetable. Um, this plant here that's just kind of taken over is actually called grass jelly. So you could harvest a bunch of the leaves, blend it with water and then let it set in the fridge and it'll make like jello just out of 100% like leaves from this plant is probably due to the, some kind of soluble fiber that dissolves and just jellifies. 
While many of my beds are the annual beds that I replant every season, once again, like the last bed, I really wanna have more perennial beds because it reduces my workload. It basically allows me to grow food year round. So like this is probably one of my favorite um, food crops you guys can grow. And I would recommend everybody grow this that can. I'm in a zone nine. And these are actually called tree collards. So the tree collards here, they basically make collard-like leafy greens or collard leafy greens. But instead of being an annual that you have to plant it'll bolt and then stop producing. This plant will grow like, I think my tallest one is like 12 feet tall and just produce leaves year round for you to eat. Even in 110 degree weather, this plant continues to produce leaves. Now, yes, the leaves do get smaller during the peak of the heat, unless you wanna put a shade cloth over the top. But in the peak of the heat, the leaves also get a lot more stronger tasting. That's because there's probably more anti-cancer properties in, in it because the plants make the metabolites or secondary plant metabolites to protect it from the elements that and the conditions that it's being grown in. And when we eat these leafy greens or juice them, now we can get the benefits of those secondary plant metabolites that are in there originally for the plant itself. So the next two beds are annual beds and these will soon get replanted for the winter time. And actually this one has lots of peppers in it. So you can see I've been uh, negligent and like not harvesting my peppers as fast as they could. There's so many peppers I need to harvest and then actually dry. So I'll have them for use into the winter time. And then uh, this next bed here um, had some okra in it that's uh, it's cooling off. So the okra is on its way out. I also planted eggplants, which you can see there's some uh, Yellow eggplants here. This guy just dropped off the plant. <laughs> and he's a bit more mature because they don't normally harvest them like this, but when you harvest them more mature, they store a little bit longer. They also get a lot more bitter. And I can smell how bitter this is gonna be. Um, but I grow a lot of eggplants because they grow really good here in the desert. And then also have some more peppers in the middle. In addition, the interesting thing about eggplants is that if the eggplant is nice and smooth all the way around, then the seeds have not formed but if you feel ridges like there's bumps on the eggplant here in the where the bumps are that's how you could tell the seed packets inside the eggplants have formed so if I feel this there's lots of ridges on here tell me that hey this is a mature eggplant and these seeds are ready for harvest but normally if you're harvesting these to eat you would feel this and you'd say oh that's not a good one to eat but for me I'll eat them young or old <laughs> eggplants are good I cook them in the instant pot all right, now we're on the, to the other side of my garden. And on this side, I have these uh, four foot circular raised beds. So I like that this separates out the crops a little bit. And I usually, you know, plant these if it's a annual or perennial bed. This is a perennial bed next to me here. And I planted one rosemary when I first moved into the house. And now you can see it took over this whole area. I just have unlimited rosemary. And I wanna encourage you guys to grow some herbs, right? Herbs are such amazing plants to grow and they provide you lots of different you know uh, nutrients and phytonutrients aromatic essential oils so good and you know if you're juicing or however you're using the you know herbs you don't need to like make a salad out of rosemary i would never do that but just putting rosemary on you know your different salads and maybe a little bit in the juices is amazing this bit happens to have some rosemary some sage as well as some lemongrass Since we're already coming into fall, I'm now planting out my fall and winter garden. I'm removing the summer crops, so the crops you saw on the other side of the garden will soon be coming out and getting replaced with my favorite plants to grow, which are the greens. I mean, my YouTube channel is called Growing Your Greens, and I believe everybody should eat more greens and especially grow your own greens. They can make the biggest difference in your life. This bed basically is a mescaline mix, so it has things like mustard greens. I think this is the Mizuna, things like bok choy. I got the uh, red Russian kale over here, really amazing. And I got a purple cauliflower there in the middle. And it's super simple, super easy to grow your own greens. I mean, the, probably the most important thing is you wanna make sure you guys get the best soil that you guys can. And in most cases, it won't come from a big box store. I'd encourage you guys to check your better, you know, local garden centers or soil yards and ask for recommendations from them to see you know, the best soil they have for growing vegetables. And then check several places because one place soil might be better than the other. 
All right, this next bed is actually a new kind of lettuce I'm planting this year. Actually, this is called the outrageous lettuce because it's outrageous. <laughs> so it's, it's a red lettuce. And I would encourage you guys to grow red lettuces or red pigmented vegetables whenever you guys are able. They're a lot more antioxidant rich than the green varieties, uh, probably due to the fact that they contain anthocyanin pigments. And that's one of the reasons why the blueberries are so healthy for you, because they're blue. And so this is the uh, outrageous lettuce. Now, in some cases, I mix different plants that I plant in one bed, and in some cases, I grow the same plant. The reason for this is because, like I talked a, lot, a little bit earlier, is that the plants will compete with each other. And if you plant two dissimilar plants, one might grow faster than the other and leave the other one small and in the dust. And in some cases, I like to see that happen, but in other cases, I wanna make sure I have food to eat and I wanna be able to eat all different kinds of foods. So for example, if I planted like broccoli in here, the broccoli would get really tall, shade out the lettuce, the lettuce wouldn't get the sun, and then I wouldn't really have any lettuce to eat. I'd have a lot more broccoli and the lettuce just wouldn't really make it. It wouldn't be able to outcompete the broccoli. All right, so as you guys can see, this, these are my sun choke plants, and these are like, I don't know, 12 feet tall. And what these produce, this is in actually the sunflower family, but these produce these edible tubers that maybe you could compare to potatoes, because most people don't know what sun chokes are, but they're tubers that you could harvest and eat raw. And actually, they're probably the number one food for your microbiome, because all the microbiome tests that I've seen have recommended that people eat more sun chokes for their microbiome. It contains inulin. Um, and actually this will grow anywhere. I mean, whether you're in Virginia or New Jersey, I've seen these grow everywhere. Actually, this is a Native American food that was a staple of the Native Americans before the white people came you know, to America. In the fall time, in the supermarkets, you guys could buy the sun choke tubers to eat. And actually those tubers that you buy, um, provided they weren't irradiated or something, you could just put them in your garden and then they'll grow next year. The best place to store the sun choke tubers are not in your fridge, they get soft really fast, is just to keep them under the ground and only dig them up as you need them. One of the ways I get my exercise is tumbling my composters that are actually quite heavy, but it's also very important for me to live as sustainably as I can on the planet. I think it's a travesty that many people just throw their food scraps away in the trash and it goes to the landfill to create more methane and mess up the atmosphere. Meanwhile, I'm composting all my food scraps, whether it's from my juicer, whether it's plant clippings from my garden. I put in these tumbling composters, and as you guys can see, I make uh, my compost that then adds to the fertility of my soil. I would encourage you guys, whether you guys have a garden or not, to compost your own food scraps so that you guys could add to the fertility of your uh, local area instead of just having it go to the landfill and rot. All right, so these next beds, this bed has like a cauliflower and broccoli. And many people know like what cauliflower and broccoli looks like, right? It's that flower, whether it's the white cauliflower or the standard green broccoli. Like you're thinking, that doesn't look like broccoli or cauliflower. That's because the broccoli or cauliflower plant will grow greens that are pretty much like kale or collard greens and grow the full season until it's at the end of its reproductive cycle when it actually makes that cauliflower head or the broccoli head. And to me, the most important part of the plant is not the broccoli or cauliflower, which is the end result of growing the leaves. And when you guys buy broccoli or cauliflower in the store, they basically just discarding the leaves. They cut the, the flower tip, they'll sell it to you, but then all the leaves go to waste. They rot in the fields in many cases. I think that's incredibly sad because the most valuable part of this plant to me is not the flower, but it is actually the leaves. So, you know, the leaves on the cauliflower and the broccoli are actually quite sweet. And in my opinion, they're sweeter than even eating like a standard kale or collard greens that you guys would buy. So this is when it's the prime season for me to be eating them because I literally just planted these. The leaves are nice and tender, you know, and the tender baby greens are much more delicious. Uh, they melt in your mouth a little bit easier than nice, hard, firm, more mature greens. So yeah, this bed has the cauliflower and broccoli. And then this bed has the cauliflower uh, with the collard greens mixed in too as well as some curly kale. So all these plants pretty much grow at the same rate. And then I think there's a couple random red stem celery and, a, and a dandelions in there as well. So yeah, this, this is my winter garden. And a lot of these greens, once they get larger, like this bed I'm already starting to harvest from to juice, you know, the, the middle, the top growth, so like these little center crowns are really good for eating. Tender greens is salad if you buy like, you know, spring mix or mescaline mix at the store to eat. 
that's what you want to harvest a few of these small leaves and i'll go around to one of each plant and i'll like harvest one baby leaf here one baby leaf here and i have 36 plants so if i harvest one leaf off every plant i have 36 leaves and i could do that to the next bed have 72 leaves i do it off a third bed i have a hundred and something leaves you know i can have a whole salad of baby leaves right and normally if i'm going to juice them I'm just gonna come to the bottom leaves because the bottom leaves, as you guys can see, they're getting shaded out by the sun because the top leaves get all the sun. The bottom leaves will just end up turning brown or yellow and dropping off. So I'll harvest all the bottom leaves to juice so that no leaf is left behind in my garden and I try to get the maximum utilization. One of the most amazing things about growing your own garden is that you guys get to select the varieties of plants you guys are growing. So you may be familiar with cauliflower that I just showed you guys. Most of the cauliflower that you buy in the store is always white, but you guys could, if you guys choose to grow it, you guys could grow green cauliflower, orange cauliflower, or even the purple cauliflower, which I'm growing. But in addition, there's other plants you could grow. So like people just think of basil as being green basil, but there's also purple basil, actually that's more nutritious than even the green basil. An amazing fact that most people don't know is that when the plant goes to the flower, this flowering stage, there's actually more antioxidants in the flower itself than in the leaves themselves. So my favorite way to use these flowers, because when they get a bit more mature, they get more fibrous. So actually I just like to juice them. You could juice them in a vacuum blender, or you could juice them through your juicer and extract the nutrients from the flowers and the stems and add that to your juice. Now your juice will taste a little bit stronger. It's gonna have a nice strong flavor. And also it may uh, you know, color your juice a little bit purple, but not too purple. So yeah, I really love growing my own uh, purple basil. It's one of my favorite basils to grow. And let's not forget, there's so many different kinds of basil. I'm also growing the Thai basil that has a nice more licorice flavor. And of course, you know, one of the amazing things about the growing a garden is that all the bees, so you can see the bees and all the nature in my garden. You know, I don't spray toxic pesticides. And actually my goal is to, if I do have to use some kind of uh, insect control, number one, I use my fingers. Number two, I could use high pressure air or high pressure water to blow bugs off plants because anything, even if it's organic certified, you spray in your garden can affect you know, your soil and the microbiome of the plant. So my goal is to not spray anything. And in some cases, if the plant is too far gone due to insect damage, I'll just pull the plant out before I spray anything. Of course, I do have some recommended organic sprays if I do need to spray, but another consideration should be hey, grow things that you don't need to spray. Like I've never had to spray my basil plants because they're pretty much just insect free from the get go. So choose the right plants to grow in your garden. So I really wanna let you guys know, even if you don't own your own property, you guys could still grow a significant amount of food in like some kind of temporary container. Whether you wanna have a plastic pot or whether you wanna have a fabric pot. In this case, if you guys look at this pot, this is basically a fabric pot. It's actually called the big bag bed. So it's fully enclosed. It's basically one long pot. It's actually 12 feet wide, 12 feet long by about a foot and a half wide. And even though, you know, it's totally portable. So if I move, I could pick it up and like literally take it with me. Now it will be really heavy. So you'll probably have to carry it out with you. But you know, even if you're renting some kind of space and you can't grow food in the ground, you could have like a large container. And so, yeah, in this bed here, I have uh, green onions. This has been growing like for almost two years now. I could come back and harvest green onions to eat whenever I'd like. Um, also have the tree collards in here. I have this one called the Go-To Cola, which is one of my favorite ones. It's actually good for your brain and good for your memory. Um, this has the Malbar spinach. It's the green version, whereas I have the red Malbar spinach on the other side of the garden. And then I'm also planting for the winter season, I'm planting the uh, sugar snap peas in here as well. All right, so as you guys can see, I got some fig trees I'm growing here. And actually these are just in like 15 gallon pots. So if you're non-committal like me in some cases, you guys could grow things in pots. Then when you find the perfect place for your fig tree or other trees, you guys could plant them in the ground. So I have a whole row of fig trees that make a nice like fig tree hedge, you know, against the, uh, the block wall. So I could see that my fig trees instead of the, um, you know, the blocks. And then also, you know, at certain times of the year, I get some fresh figs to eat. My goal is to grow more vegetables than fruit trees because the vegetables will produce year round. Whereas the fig trees, while you could eat the baby leaves as they emerge, because technically they are edible, uh, most of the year the fig trees just sit here and take up space without providing me any food. 
So if you're in a limited space, I would encourage you guys to grow more, especially vegetables and especially leafy greens and herbs that will benefit you and your health a lot more. So I hope you guys enjoyed the garden tour that I was able to share with you guys today here in my garden. And I wanna let you guys know that I want you guys to grow a garden. It's really not that hard, not that difficult. I may make it look easy, but once again, I've been doing this for so many years. So start small and expand and grow bigger as time goes on, as you get more confident. And if you guys wanna learn more information about how to grow your own food, you can check me out at Growing Your Greens on YouTube. I have over 1,600 videos that'll teach you guys directly how to grow your own food, including how to put in irrigation, how to choose the best soil, how to plant your plants, you know, how to make your plants more disease and insect you know, resistant so you don't get, you know, diseases and bugs attacking your plants. Everything you guys want to learn is on my YouTube channel at Growing Your Greens. So yeah, visit me there, check me out more, and I hope to see you growing in the future.